Rome, total war. Or should I say, total war, Rome? Currently, the bulk of Britain's army is trapped in northern Italy, sandwiched between the Gauls and the Romans. Don't ask, I'm not proud of how all this happened. All you need to know is that, as per your vote, my army is preparing to leave the safety of their city to venture across France as a crowd of homeless people. I don't know why you thought that was a good idea, but I'm going to humour you. Right now, they're fighting off a rebel army that just appeared out of nowhere to attack them. Because why not? Everything in this game hates Britain's leader, Baravendus, right now. But he's a hero. He can take it. These rebels are using Roman troops, a reminder of the ferocity of the empire that will eventually consume most of Europe. But at least this army's small and manageable, especially for a general as capable as Baravendus. We need Another army defeated. For now. So how did I get here? Last video ended with my two armies separated in the Alps, controlling a single region that's surrounded by hostile Roman and French forces. I also found myself in a poor financial situation, one that I'd try to relieve by disbanding any unused armies in England, just hoping that the French wouldn't attack me anytime soon. Next, I try to relieve the pressure by proposing a ceasefire with Rome. Be quick, our patience is limited. Surely you jest. But they weren't having any of it. The clue's in the game's title. It loves the Romans. They crush everybody else and go about it in the snobbiest way possible. How dare these uncivilised barbarians suggest peace? They weren't even willing to have a ceasefire in exchange for an entire province for free. Surely you jest. But what about the French? Well, yes, I will attack them. But my armies were depleted from past engagements, so I first set about reuniting them and retraining them up to full strength again. This involved sneaking through a Roman province, which I miraculously achieved. Victory! And then I needed to clear the rest of the way by defeating the rebel army that you saw being crushed at the start of this video. Victory! Now reunited, I poured all of my money into bringing this army back up to full strength, for it was to be only them against all of mainland Europe. And then I set off, over the mountains and far away. Victory! This left my province in Italy undefended, surely to be retaken at any moment by the French or Romans. So I gave it away to the Romans for free, simply out of spite. A most generous proposal. Meanwhile, my army had arrived at the next French-controlled province along, but the province of Massilia was ready for this and contained several large French armies, ready to repel a British invasion. So I bypassed all that and invaded the next province along instead. Begin the siege! The gate is broken! My besieging strategies had improved since the first video. I pincered the city from two directions, making good use of my slingers and spear-hurling chariots to soften the enemy up before engaging them head-on. It still descended into a messy free-for-all, sort of like CSGO casual mode, but I came out victorious, and with few casualties. The enemy warlord is dead, slain by your brave war We need fight! Before I could do anything, Baravendus was under siege from the French, and to add insult to injury, the French had sunk the British navy. Baravendus defeated the Gaul army in a brave auto-resolve, and then I came up with an idea. I marched my army out of the city and struck up negotiations with Rome. Diplomacy in this game has sucked so far, with every deal being incredibly one-sided against me. But why not play this to my advantage? I could carve a line through France, giving each province straight to the Romans. That way, the French won't simply be able to retake it without creating a powerful new foe. Regretfully, we must decline. But no, giving Rome a province for free was no longer good enough for them. The choosing beggars. I tried improving my relations with them by giving them smaller things for free. Even the game thought this was generous of me, and yet the Romans still declined. Honestly, trying to use negotiations in this game as any faction other than Rome is like arguing with a brick wall. And eventually they gave the excuse that I had given them too many past proposals to be taken seriously. Screw this. And then, since my army was no longer in the province, the French came along and reclaimed it instantly. Baravendus marched north, taking the province there instead and defeating a few more sizeable French armies in the process. I realised at this point that something needed to change. I couldn't just keep raiding France like this, one province at a time. Sure, it's fun to do, but England isn't generating enough income for it to be sustainable, while the French seem to be printing their own money to be able to afford such ridiculously massive armies with which to chuck at me every round. Nowhere was safe. 
Every turn, assassinations were attempted on my leader, and I seemed powerless to do anything about this constant threat looming over him. I tried again to give Rome literally an entire province for literally free, but it still wasn't good enough for them. And soon the enemy caught up to Baravendus and he had to hold the city against an army twice the size of his. The enemies had many battering rams. Despite the city watch's best efforts, they couldn't all be destroyed and very soon the enemy were through the walls in several places. This is a disaster! Luckily for me, they chose only to attack the wall in a few key locations and I had enough forces to form a line around them. I sent a few squads around the back to flank them, and while the French countered many of these, a few troops made it and helped surround the main French force. But it felt underwhelming. Normally this delivers a devastating blow to the army that's encircled, but the French shrugged it off. I guess the numbers were too great, and my defence not quite coordinated enough. When that plan fell through, I had no choice but to roll out Britain's finest. Without hesitation, Baravendus charged straight into the back of the enemy army, like a saint's priest taste the difference knife through Aztec value butter. Your leader is dead! And with it, any hope of victory was thrown out the window. But my remaining troops held the town centre to their last man, defending against a much larger army for an impressive period of time. The French foolishly charged in with their leader and he too was slain by the few Britons who remained. This was a terrible but seemingly inevitable loss for Britain, and I was pushed out of France completely. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. But in a way I think it was for the best, because it ended a stalemate that I had found myself in since the start of this playthrough. All this time I had been on the brink of bankruptcy, that large army of mine in Europe gobbling up all of my funds every turn. Without this my kingdom suddenly became very profitable again. I was able to invest this into my lands, to improve the road networks, to strike trade deals and to generally level up Britain's economy to the next level, and to upgrade my units to be better prepared for future battles. It wasn't all peace, I attacked Ireland with a load of generals I had accumulated, and they made an entrance that the locals would never forget. Our warriors have taken the walls! I struck up trade deals with Spain. Generous proposal. Germany was more of a challenge, requiring me to utilise all of my advanced negotiation tactics to get updated map information on their whereabouts, and that of their neighbours. Our thanks! And to my amazement, even managed a ceasefire and trade deal with Rome. A most generous proposal. But the purple Romans still managed to be complete dicks about it. Would you consider? Until next time. I dabbled with trading, but it seemed like an expensive affair. Merchants cost a lot of money to make, they produced little income per turn, and were continually driven out of business by a horde of skilled barbarian merchants who seemed to appear out of nowhere every round. What proved to be a lot more profitable was to keep my army small and to rely on a spy network in France to ensure that no armies were sneaking aboard ships to cross the channel. Interestingly, no matter how nice I was to people, I simply couldn't get anybody to ally with me. It was as though I was toxic trash that no faction wanted to be associated with. The Germans could ally with the Romans, and the French could fall out and make up with whomever they wanted, but it seemed as though Europe really, really hated Britain for some reason, though they still accepted my trade deals. But I couldn't help but think that everybody was waiting for their chance to invade me. Even the Red Romans continually declared war on me behind my back, and I only noticed when I bothered to check those hidden away notifications on the side. Fickle lot. All in all though, this strategy of no war whatsoever seemed to work very nicely for me. I accumulated upgrades and wealth with every turn, and soon dozens of years had passed. But none of this was helping me to invade France. So the moment I had researched my most powerful units possible and had maxed out my armour upgrades, I began work building the most powerful army I could with which to invade France with. But as I was doing this, something rather unexpected occurred. It appears that the Romans had arrived in northern France, something I was blissfully unaware of since no faction in the world was willing to trade their map information with me. I was missing my chance to invade France, so I got what army I could onto ships and set them off across the channel. By the time I got there the Romans had invaded everywhere and there was just one lone squad of French soldiers left. Good enough. We're under attack. Oh, 
I crushed what was left of the French army. We need fight no more! Yet they remained on the campaign map. I tried my best to get map information from the Red Romans, but they had reverted back to being major dicks. Would you consider... Would you consider... Luckily for me, one of the Roman provinces rebelled against their leaders and became the Gauls again, giving me the perfect excuse to attack. The enemy warlord shows his worth. Any of our warriors would die rather than run. I spearheaded an attack on the mainland with the strongest army the Britons had ever seen and crushed the French defenders. Captured! Now all that was left was a single Gaulic province in Spain, but between me and them was half a Roman legion and Carthage seemed pretty keen to take the Gauls themselves. Bribes kept them at bay, giving me time to march my armies through France to get there first. There were Roman armies everywhere, huge ones, and where we fought my British troops sustained heavy losses. But I had learned from experience that it was best just to heal up and to head on, and so I did. The Carthage repeatedly besieged the French province, but I successfully bribed them every time. We may have a private word. Well, uh, when you put it like that. Eventually I reached them and laid siege to the last French stronghold with Baravendus' son, keen to end what his father had started. Begin the, siege. the battle was one-sided. I crushed their reinforcements and then it was just a case of taking the town centre. Finally I got to use my head hermits, and so began the final battle. They're attacking us! Enemy warlord lies dead. Now he can drink with his ancestors and watch his warriors flee. This is a great victory. The cries of dying enemies are sweet music to our warriors. I had done it. I had defeated France. Admittedly, with a bit of help from the Romans who are now about to invade England. But who cares about that? My job here is done. <laughs>